Good afternoon and welcome everyone. It's great to have you with us on the Ranger Show. My name is of course Russell Gerber and it's my pleasure to hang out with you for the next half an hour. We will go through all things African and what we've got on the live cameras. See, we've got a great procession of elephants arriving at the waterhole at Tau. Lovely blue wildebeest or brindled gnu around as well. But it's great to be back with you all. And thank you for joining us. As always, if you have any questions, please do pop them in the little viewing box below. You'll see a little spot for your questions there. And you can send through anything that you might have on your mind and as always if you wouldn't mind just popping your name in there so we know who we're talking to it's always a pleasure to interact with you all and I see we've got a few tuning in Pat from Florida welcome back Pat great to have you with us it's good to have you Marcel hello again it's good to have you back with us thanks for tuning in Stephanie from Virginia welcome back and to all the rest of you out there, as always, a great pleasure. So we've got a fun show on the cards for today. Of course, we never know what might arrive at the waterholes, and we'll always be keeping our eye on the live cams, seeing if anything exciting comes down. Obviously, we've had really great numbers of elephants out. <laughs> and there you can hear one of the youngsters echoing my sentiments of, Elephants arriving on camera at Tau. We've seen great numbers of elephants at Tembi, which is not unusual, as many of you know. But it's so nice to see them all coming down for a drink. Many of you know that when the summer months do come around again, often the big herds of elephants, these big breeding herds, tend to disappear. We don't see them for fairly long periods as they move into other parts of the reserve. Hello, Alison from Liverpool. Welcome, welcome. So, yeah, as I said, we'll be focusing on the live cams as always, but we've got some great highlights for you as well. Uh, this week we're going to do something a little different. We've touched on a few of our characters of Africam that many of you know well. And today we're just going to dive a little deeper into the wonders of the leopards that we tend to see on the cameras as many of you also know certainly one of my favorite animals and one I always like to have a little bit of a focus on from time to time but uh, we're going to dive into some of those uh, a little later on so that you can get a feel for who we tend to see at the various locations around the country and uh, we're going to keep working on building up a little leopard ID kit you can see these two, looks like two bull elephants having a little tussle there. And that one elephant covered in very white sand and dust. Making yourself look almost leucistic or albino, but uh, it's definitely not that. It looks like some of the calcite that they dig through from time to time that she's thrown on her back. Beautiful herds of elephants. Not much food around for them at the moment. Susie from Montana. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Kate from the Ukraine. Thank you for joining us. Stephanie, thank you for the welcome. What You ask what was the best part of my recent safari. Oh, Stephanie, impossible question. Everything was amazing, to be honest. We went to such great locations. I went up to the Okavango. I went up to the Linyanti. Uh, then we came back down to South Africa where we spent some time uh, in the Lubombo area of Kruger. And then we finished off um, at uh, the glorious Royal Malawan, uh, which is, of course, uh, in the southern part of Kruger as well, all part of the great, Greater Kruger. Um, but yeah, it was just a magical trip. We got spoiled with wonderful sightings from incredible lion hunts and kills, which we've seen some of here on the cameras. 
I uh, watched leopard kill, we saw wild dog kill, we saw uh, just incredible sightings of elephants in the water around the Linyanti and swimming. Um, we had uh, yeah, just a, a great time to be honest and uh, it was just great to be back out there. It was a long time since my last safari so always a pleasure to get back out there. But thank you for your question. I'll be back. Well, I'm back on the cameras now with you folks for a while before I head out again. So we've got lots of fun to have together in the coming months. So as I mentioned, we'll be going through some of those uh, leopard kits, just trying to identify the animals. We are uh, just trying to give you guys a little bit of a feel for who we tend to see and ways to identify them. And now uh, I wanted to just put out a little question to you or a little quiz for the day and see how sharp you are. Uh, in terms of identifying leopards, what's the most common way that we identify different leopard individuals? So I'll leave that with you and uh, we'll come back to that a little later on. But for the time being, it's really great watching all these elephants. You can see a sneaky waterbuck female in the background there. Beautiful wildebeest. But without further ado, let's dive into our first leopard highlight. And this is of the Rosie's female, as we've dubbed her. Now, we uh, are not naming the animals. We're trying not to name them. We just wanted to get an idea for who comes down more commonly. And this is certainly one of those um, who we see from time to time, obviously around Rosie's. We see her at Naledi as well, as you can see here. And uh, one of the ways we've identified her is through that special way, which we'll get to a little later on. But another way is various marks on their body. So we, we tend to look at things like uh, whether they have notches out of their ears, um, the type of spots they have on the side of their bodies, or any unique barkings that they might have. Uh, and if you look carefully on her left hand side there, her, her spots look almost like roses in certain locations on the left hand side of her body and uh, which is quite a nice way to identify her. The, the spots are not quite the typical rosette that you see. On her right hand side you'll see there's almost a spot that looks like a, a smiley face. So if you look carefully you'll be able to see that. And uh, that smiley face and those almost rose shaped spots on the left side of her body helps to identify her a little more easily and then of course the notches out of the ears are also very helpful for us to identify her and then lastly that third way which I will tell you a little later on in the show but those are the kinds of things we use or try to use to identify the leopards themselves. So obviously we take into account what territory they're in, um, whether it's a male or a female, and um, we, we use those locations of where we see them and then those identifying features to narrow down the particular species that we might be looking at, or well, not species, sorry, individual that we might be looking at. So that's our first frequent visitor that we wanted to show you and I'm sure many of you have seen her around over the last few months um, as we've seen on the cameras in recent times as things have dried up we're seeing a lot more of the predators around on the cameras and of course the leopards tend to be more active at night. We're back live now of course over at the glorious Tembi. And you guys keep sending in your answers to that leopard ID question and then we'll see how many of you got it right as we 
to go on in the show. Now that rosy female, she does actually have one sub-adult cub that we also see around Naledi and Rosie's pan. We'll have a look at her in a minute. We have a question, how old is she, that Rosie's female? I don't know her exact age, if I'm honest, and the only way for us to know that, of course, is to actually see her being born. And many of the guides on the various locations would actually know that. They spend time out there every day tracking down these animals. But since she's had a cub already, at least one that I know of, I would suggest she's at, at least four years old. A very healthy looking female leopard as well. But uh, hopefully we'll get to see some more of her over the coming months. And here is that little sub-adult that we just mentioned. So as we said, this is uh, Rosie's cub. Also a female. As I mentioned, there is another way of identifying her. But uh, we'll get to that in just a little later. The best identifying features for her, um, she has little interesting markings just above her eyes. It's almost like a whole bunch of smudged spots in the middle of her forehead. And that's quite an easy way to identify her. And then her collar, you see that string of lines or spots, sorry, around her neck. It's a pretty clearly identifiable collar there. And uh, if you look at it, there's on her necklace, there's one thick line and then two spots on each side of that line of dots. Not so easy to see in this particular shot, but if you look carefully, you'll be able to witness or see those identifying features. So for the Rosie's cub, those almost smudged spots above the eyes in the middle of the forehead, and then that necklace, the lines across the necklace with two spots on each side of the necklace are the easiest identifying features for the Rosie's cub. As I mentioned, also a female, but we're back live now checking out Rosie's, hoping that she'll arrive any minute. I'm not hugely confident that will happen, but you never know, of course. A few of you have sent through your answers already. About how to identify the leopards. So thank you for that. We'll Keep looking at your answers as we go. One of you mentioned, is it the spots? Yes, it is the spots, but it's where the spots. That's how we identify them, and we'll let you know in just a moment. Mm-hmm. 
Brown Naledi, Rosie's Pan and Willie Funts River. So it suggests he's a dominant male in the area and could well be the father of that sub-adult Rosie's Cub. <coughs> then identifying himself quite clearly. And this is still that one one male. And that was a big clue to how we identify these individuals. Here he is again checking out the camera at Willy Funts. like a slightly younger fellow and another big dominant male we tend to see particularly around Willy Funts. But a beautiful young leopard he is. Now you don't often see males with any sort of overlap in territory in fact, if they do come across each other, it's likely they will have a pretty severe fight. If they're similar in size, those fights can get even more severe. If one is significantly bigger than the other, almost always, the smaller one will run off. Obviously, leopard getting injured is a big problem, so they try to avoid that as much as they can. Look closely at his face here. As I said, he's a 1-1 one, one male. He's also got a thick necklace that we just spoke about. But that 1-1 one, one is going to be your biggest clue for exactly who we're looking at. Many of you have got that answer right so far of how we identify them. So well done. Size of the ears was mentioned. No, but we do use different markings on the ears if there is any notches or scarring. Any scarring on the body also will help us to identify them. Ah! <laughs> you can hear the baboons going crazy here with our... One one male leopard. And we're back live now. Looks like we're back at Tau. Where things are looking very muddy and very dry. One of you asks, does it ever dry up at Tau? It can get very dry. Um, they do have facilities to pump water from underground at the Tau waterhole if needed. And that's part of the reason why we often see a concentration of animals in the area. particularly in the winter time. There really just isn't much other water available on the reserve. You can see this youngster playing around on the edge of the water hole. <laughs> and rolling around in the dirt. The elephants will tend to come down for a drink at least once or t normally twice a day, particularly when it's very dry like this. You can see what looks like a yellow-billed stalk in the background. Got our blacksmith lapwing in the bottom right of your screen there. Elephants all looking rather dirty, enjoying their day at the spa. Now 
It really has been amazing how many elephants have been around. But uh, carrying on with our leopard theme, so we've just had a look at what we've dubbed the 1-1 one, one male. And another that we've seen fairly often, and I know many of you enjoy as well, a very big male. And we've dubbed him the Olifants River male. And many of you out there have seen him a few times on the cameras from our highlights and walking along the edge of the river over the years. And even though we tend to see him quite nicely walking by the cameras and walking by the river at night, he's quite shy when it comes to the vehicles. And you can see here he was quite anxious when he heard any sort of sound of the game drive vehicles approaching. Some leopards can be like that. In my experience, I've seen that more often than not, the males are actually far more skittish than the females. The females tend to be a lot more relaxed around the vehicles. But here he is, a beautiful specimen. You can see a couple of scars missing from his ears there. A little notch on his left ear his necklace looks quite interesting too it's got almost two clear almost bolder clusters of spots on either side of his collarbone and you can see that is a nice identifying feature and then there's one more feature give you just a few more minutes to figure out what that is. And his, uh, that feature has dubbed him 1-2. I love listening to him call. It's always such a special sound for the bush. And there you have it. So that's another one of our common visitors. Well, common is relative, of course, but as the leopards go, those are the characters we've identified so far as the ones we tend to see the most often. If you guys have any input or other ideas, we are always interested in engaging and learning from you who spend so much time watching the cameras so do let us know if we've misidentified anybody but uh, yeah so that last one as I mentioned we've dubbed the Olifants River male um, also known as 1-2 and the reason for that the most common way to identify leopards in the wild is through the spot pattern it's called spot patterns and essentially what we're looking at is which can be quite confusing to people, but essentially what it is is the uppermost row of spots on the leopard's cheeks. So there are the spots above the upper line of the whiskers, and the spot pattern is made up of the number of spots first on the right cheek and then on the left cheek as you're looking at it. It's almost like you were reading a book as we look at the leopard's face. And therefore, as I mentioned, those two males before, the one one male means that he's got one spot above that whisker line on the left side or his right side of his face and then one spot on the left side of his face above the whisker line. So that's a nice identifying feature for him. The Olifants River male has the one two spot pattern, meaning that on his right side, just above the whisker line, he has one spot, and then on the left side of his face, just above the whisker line, two spots. And then, as I mentioned, you take into account all the other factors of where you find them, what their sex is, any other features, like uh, missing a knot from the ears, or any other spot patterns around the necklace that we spoke about, and, of course, just identifying features on the leopard itself. So let's look at it one more time. We'll go back to, let's say, our Olifants River leopard. And then I can show you exactly what we're talking about with the spot pattern. 
while we're watching our elephants having a wonderful mud bath. So here you can see, if you look closely at him, on the left side of his face, our right as we look at him, that top line of whiskers, or above the top line of whiskers, you'll see there's two little spots standing alone. We'll give it some time. We're going a little closer so you can see. And on the other side of his face, on the right side, as we spoke about, on this particular chap is one spot. We've also mentioned the little notch out of the top of his ear. And that is the most commonly used means of identifying leopards. So for any of you out there, while you're watching the cameras, and you happen to be lucky enough to spot one of our beautiful spotted cats, you can use these means to identify them. Keep a little log and see who's been around. So there you have it. And thank you for taking part, everybody. Let's see who got it right. Gilly got it right. Well done. <laughs> and who else has got it right? Stephanie, you got it right. Well done. Marcel, 100%. Pat also got it. You guys know your stuff. I'm going to have to come up with some harder questions next week, I think. But really cool that we've uh, you know, really been fortunate enough to see these leopards consistently over the years, some of them, and over the last few months, others. And so as I say, keep your eyes out, out there. And we'll try and keep track of these lovely creatures and see what they're up to and give a little bit of context to what we're seeing on the cameras. So we'll go into that again from time to time when we do see these individuals show up. But, uh, we're back live now. This is, of course, at Willyfunce River. The water level's looking really low, but still Unbelievably beautiful shot, always. As we pan around and have a look, and there's that pathway, of course, that that male, that really fun sort of a male, tends to enjoy to walk down and scent mark along. Now, I'm not sure if there's ever been any conflict between him and his counterpart, the 1-1 one -one male that we showed you a little earlier. We'll see if we can get some more information on them as we go throughout the rest of the year. And we got another one. Mouse Purr, you got it right as well, yes. Counting spots, spots above the whisker line. You said you saw video of that Rosie's leopard in late 2016. So there you have it. She's at, at least five years old then. As I say, I didn't know her from when she was born. She looks in great condition. I think the prime of her life. So if you were seeing her then, Mouse Purr, and she was an adult already, I suspect she would then be probably around eight or nine years old even. But again, difficult to tell. That is a best educated guess. But uh, thanks for keeping us in the loop. Pat mentions it's amazing how much of their body gets involved in a roar. I agree, Pat. It's amazing seeing those big males soar in the night like that. And it carries a long distance, that call. One of my favorite sounds of the bush for sure but folks unfortunately that is all the time we have together today 
And thank you, as always, for your interaction. Such a pleasure chatting to you all again. Um, please be, bear in mind that we are doing some new shows as well on explore.org on their website and then also on YouTube on Explore Africa. Those shows are going out at 4 o'clock Central African time on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays we do the AfriCam show where we do the live cams very much like our Ranger show and then on Thursday we will dive into a little bit more detail in conservation where we do our AfriCam for good show brought to you by explore.org so if you're keen on some more content please do join us then but for now as always A great pleasure to be with you and I will see you all again next week on africam.com but uh, do tune in tomorrow for our africam for good show on explore.org cheers for now everyone <laughs>